So when we think of stewardship, we generally think of it in terms of possessions, right? Last week, we talked about the wealthy landowner who proved to be a very poor steward, thinking of his harvest as his own and never even considering sharing the gifts that God had given him. Today, Jesus again touches on stewardship of possessions, but he goes on to expand that to include our use of time. Be like people waiting, he says. The truth is, of course, we are waiting. One of the teachings of the church is that Jesus will come one day, will one day return, and God will call time, as we know it, to an end. But no one knows when that will happen. And so we wait. And we've been waiting 2,000 years. But I believe we're waiting for far more than Jesus' final coming. Jesus is constantly coming. Coming into our lives, into our situations, into our world to remind us that the kingdom of God is already ours. And we don't need to live in fear. But the other truth is that we are not good at waiting, are we? Most of us actually do live with fear. Fear of not mattering. Fear of not being good enough. Fear that God doesn't find us acceptable. Fear that we're doomed for eternity. We tend to forget this promise that Jesus begins with. Your Father delights in giving you the kingdom. God already loves us. If only we could cling to that promise in living. Instead, we often think of passages like this one as a to-do list from God, the way we're to stay on God's good side. As one writer put it, sell your possessions, give alms, store up for yourself heavenly sorts of treasures. Not all of this earthly stuff like cars and houses and clothes and shoes, like savings accounts and retirement funds, 401ks and 529s. And be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be ready at all costs for God's coming among you. Live a life that would make God happy and proud enough that should God show up at your door, you would swing it wide with joy, show God around, such that God would be so happy so pleased, so proud of your life and faith that God, God's self, would hike up his drawers, tighten his belt, pull out a chair for you and make you a drink or serve you dinner. Who could possibly do all those things? How will I ever win favor with God since I'm not accomplishing the things required? We skip right past that opening line. Your father delights in giving you the kingdom. This isn't a to-do list to make us acceptable to God. This is a to-do list to help us be who God created us to be, to help us fit into the kingdom and to share it with all those we meet. We are not to live a life of fear, but instead lives of gratitude and compassion and active waiting. Active waiting means we aren't just twiddling our thumbs or scrolling our phones. Active waiting means we are alert and ready for the coming of Christ. Jesus comes at all times in our lives. Jesus is forever coming unexpectedly into our lives, and we are to be alert, sharp, ready, and prepared to see him, receive him, welcome him. There's a wonderful anecdotal story that tells of a child who had her first experience at a Christian camp. She played, sang, laughed, studied, learned, prayed. And that night in their cabin, the counselor asked the campers where they had seen Jesus that day. Bewildered, she answered, wait, he was here? If we're not waiting well, we may well miss the Christ in our midst. Jesus' parable tells us how to be a good waiter. First, it involves preparation. Be dressed, ready for service. We are to be waiting, watching, being alert, and equipped to serve our neighbor and our God. When Christ comes to us as the single mom, as the poverty and homeless man, 
as the angry, confused teenager, as the drug addict, the depressed soul, as any of a thousand people who cross our paths, we must be prepared to act as a member of God's kingdom and to share the kingdom with that one. Secondly, Jesus says a good waiter maintains what is necessary. In other words, keep your lamps lit. It's my understanding that to keep lamps lit in Jesus' day was quite an onerous task. One had to be constantly renewing the oil and trimming the wicks. A poor waiter would have let the lamps go out and probably had trouble bringing light into the darkness again when it was needed. It would take a while to get things up and going. As we wait for the coming of Jesus, we are to keep things in good order. We should be ready to do with less so that we have more to give. We should be, read we should be readily accepting of God's forgiveness for our own sins so that we can be ready to forgive the sins of others. We must be loving one another, yes, even him, even her. We must be at the ready to stand and speak out against injustice when we see it. We must maintain our prayer life so that we are ready to pray with and for others. We are to vote for, work for peace, live, shop, and consume in ways that care for creation and for the workers in the creation process. We are to maintain our own health so that we can advocate for health care for others. A good waiter is keeping his or her tools of faith sharpened, honed, ready for use to further the kingdom he or she has been given by God. And finally, a good waiter lives in expectation. The people waiting for their master expected he would return at any time. They lived in anticipation of that happening at any moment and in the assurance that it, it, it would happen. Like them, we are to live in anticipation and assurance that Jesus is forever dropping in on us, intersecting with our lives. A telephone call, a chance encounter with a friend, a conversation with a family member. God comes unexpectedly into our lives each day and every day. We are to expect that, to be alert to that, sensitive to God's presence in and around us all the time. Perhaps we would experience God more if we expected that God is here, right here with us. When the master in the story returned from his wedding, he brought his bride home and found his staff ready and waiting for him. Now, they had no idea when he might return, but they were prepared, had their lamps lit, and waited expectantly. And did you notice what the master did in the story? He took off his party clothes, donned his apron and towel, treated them like honored guests, and waited on them, no doubt serving them a meal and drink. Sound like anyone we know? In our communion liturgy, we say these words, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. The master becomes the server and the host, and we who wait become honored guests. A foretaste of that is ours as we come to the table this morning. May we learn to be good waiters. Thanks be to God. Amen.